Hello everyone and welcome to another anatomy video. This is Dr. Ayan from the Veterinary Anatomy channel. Today we will talk about uh, the head cavities of the sheep and other associated uh, structures. So let's get started. Here, as you can see, we cut the head of the sheep in the middle. So we have the right half and in general, and before we start talking about the different structures, which we can see here, let me tell you that there are three main cavities inside the head. The first one, which we can see here is the cranial cavity or the cranium is the place where we have the brain. So look, inside this cavity, we have the right half of the brain, including the cerebrum, the cerebellum here, and the brainstem. This cavity ends here by the magnum foramen, you know, where the spinal cord starts from the medulla oblongata and moves inside the vertebral canal. Okay, let's go back here. The second cavity is the nasal cavity. This is the nasal cavity. So, as we cut the head in the middle, we found a structure exactly in the middle here called the nasal septum. To be able to see the structures inside the right or the left half of the nasal cavity, you have to remove the septum and that's what we've done. So we removed the nasal septum from here and this is the structures which we can see inside and we are going to describe in this video. The third cavity, which we can see here, is the oral cavity. The oral cavity, the location where we have the tongue inside the oral cavity here. This is the tongue. So let's start with the nasal cavity. Inside the nasal cavity, as you can see, we can see these structures here. This is what's called the nasal concha. So we have the dorsal nasal concha, this one here. We have the ventral nasal concha. We have the middle nasal concha. And here, as you can see, we have several small nasal concha, which start from the ethmoid bone. The ethmoid bone is the bone which forms the nasal wall of the cranium or the rostral wall of the cranium. So from the ethmoid bone here, we have this small concha called the ethmoidal concha. Again, the dorsal nasal concha, ventral nasal concha, the middle nasal concha, and the ethmoidal concha. Between this nasal concha, so if we put something here, so we can see what's called the, the nasal meatus. So we have in general also three nasal meatuses. The first one located dorsal to the nasal concha, called between the dorsal you know, nasal concha and the roof of the nasal cavity or the nasal bone in this case. This meatus, as you can see, this area here, called the dorsal nasal meatus. The second one located between the dorsal nasal concha and the ventral nasal concha. So this is what's called the middle nasal meatus here this area here. The third one located ventral to the ventral nasal concha, between the ventral nasal concha and the floor of the nasal cavity, this one here called the ventral nasal meatus. Of course, this is very important in uh, the way that if you want to go with your endoscope, you have to know that if you go through the dorsal nasal meatus, you will end blend here, so you cannot go anywhere. This is the area where we have more like olfactory mucosa. If you go with the endoscope through the middle nasal meatus, you will end blindly here also. But let me just tell you that this is the area where we have the connection, the foramen to the paranasal cavities. If you want to go with your endoscope to see the nasopharynx, this area, or the larynx, or the cervicus or the pharynx in total in this case, or if you want to push like a nutrition tube through the nose, pharynx, uh, cervicus, 
up to the stomach, for example, or if you want to go through the nasal cavity, pharynx, larynx, and trachea up to the lung. In this case, you have to use, guys, you have to use the ventral nasal meatus. So the ventral nasal meatus, as you can see here, is the biggest one. And this is the area where you have to put your finger inside the nostril and guide your endoscope or nutrition tube or whatever here toward the ventral nasal meatus. If you follow the catheter here, you will find that we will end up in this case into what's called the uh, nasopharynx. As we are talking about the nasopharynx, let me just tell you that this area here called the pharynx. From here, from the nasopharynx, you can go with the nutrition tube up to the esophagus, which is located in this area above the trachea or the larynx. Or you can go also with the, sorry for this, with the endoscope, you know, through the larynx into the trachea and from there to the respiratory system. Okay, so this is the ventral nasal meatus. Here, let me jump and talk about this structure, which we can see just between the nasal cavity and the oral cavity. This is what's called the palate, the heart palate. If you remember in one of the videos we, um, we, we, we have, you know, we talked that the bony structure of the heart palate is formed by firstly here, the horizontal plate of the palatine bone. In this area, the palatine process of the maxilla, and in the front area here, we have the palatine process of the insides of bone. So they form the bony structure of the, um, of the hard palate. And of course, the hard palate is covered by the cornified mucosa here to form finally the palate. If you follow the hard palate caudally, you will find that the, from the caudal end of the hard palate, there is a musculo-membranous uh, musculo, uh, uh, structure, you know, start from the caudal end of the hard palate and moves caudally. This is what's called the soft palate. The soft palate, in this case, is attached to the lateral wall of the pharynx, and in this area, I will show you later to the tongue. Okay, this is the soft palate. So it has its or it originate from the hard palate here and uh, you no know, knees free inside the pharynx. So now let's move to the pharynx. In the pharynx here, uh, we can actually divide the pharynx into three main areas. The first one is that area or that region of the pharynx located just caudal to the nasal cavity called the nasopharynx. Just below the soft palate, this area here located in the caudal region of the oral cavity called the oropharynx and the rest of the pharynx called the laryngopharynx from the name because it's located toward the larynx. So the pharynx could be divided into nasopharynx, this area here, oropharynx, and laryngopharynx, this area here. Here, as you can see, the soft palate is located or separates between the nasopharynx and the oropharynx. Okay, good. Let's jump to the oral cavity. As we said before, here in this area, the main organ which we can see or find is the tongue. This is the tongue which we cut also in the middle here. And the tongue in general could be divided into three parts. The apex, the corpus, and the radix. In other words, the tip of the tongue, the body of the tongue, and the root of the tongue. Apex lingua, corpus lingua, and radix lingua. Tip, body, root. If you look at the tongue here, in ruminants or in the sheep, you will find that it forms this projection in this area here, called the torus lingua. In front, this is the case just in ruminants. In front of the torus lingua here, this depression called the lingual fossa. And after that, of course, we have the tongue here. 
up to the tip. So the tongue itself is a muscular structure. It's a muscle where if you want to look in details into the tongue, you will find that the tongue, this muscle has three different kind of muscle fibers oriented in three different orientations. The first one, the first muscle fibers are located or oriented longitudinally, longitudinally. The other kind of muscle fibers are located prependicularly or vertical like this. The other one is transverse muscle fibers from right to left. And that's why animals and even human can move the tongue in all directions. In addition to the, to this muscle, which called actually the proper muscle of the tongue, proper muscle of the tongue, we have also some other muscles to help us moving the tongue in all directions. The first one, which we can see here, as you can see, originate from the shin and moves toward the tongue. In this case, just remember the origin and insertion of these muscles, which we are going to describe now, and you will know the name of them. So this one here is the genioglossal muscle. Genioglossal muscle moves oblique here in this area. Genioglossal muscle. Here we can see the base of the hyoid bone, which we cut in the middle. This is the base hyoid bone. From the base hyoid bone toward the tongue, we have another muscle called the hyoglossal muscle. This is the hyoglossal muscle. Hyoglossal. Hyoid tongue. Hyoglossal muscle. Here, in this view, we can see another muscle extends here between the chin up to the base hyoid bone called the geniohyoid muscle. Geniohyoid muscle. I'm just naming the origin and insertion. So if you forget the origin and insertion, please uh, take them from the name of the muscle. If you forget the name of the muscle, think about the origin and insertion and you will get the name of the muscle. Okay, if we move to this area here, we can see the larynx and of course just the right half of the larynx here. So the larynx has uh, four different kind of cartilaginous structures. The first one which we can see here and it's located more down is the thyroid cartilage. Thyroid cartilage. Here we have the right arytenoid cartilage. This is the right arytenoid cartilage. Here in this area, we have the cricoid cartilage, which we can see cut here. So cricoid cartilage. And in front of this all, we have here the epiglottis. The epiglottis is there to close actually the glottis. The glottis is not a structure. It's the, the opening of the larynx here up to the, you know, to the, to the respiratory system. So if there is food and the animal swallow the food, for example, in this case, we need to make sure to close the opening to the respiratory system. How does it happen? By moving the epiglottis caudally to close the opening to the larynx. How can this happen is also by the help of the geniohyoid muscle. The geniohyoid muscle, if, if, if this muscle is contracted, you know, the base hyoid bone will move uh, rostrally, which will cause, because of the connection between this and the epiglottis, will cause, you know, that the epiglottis will move caudally and close the glottis or the opening to the larynx. Okay? Good. Again, thyroid cartilage arytenoid cartilage, cricoid cartilage, and the epiglottis. And we can see just the half of the uh, larynx. So here, if you just take the arytenoid cartilage in your hand, you can find that there is actually two folds extending between the arytenoid cartilage up to the thyroid cartilage 
and here we're talking about the vocal fold and the vestibular fold. So here we have the vocal fold and here we have the vestibular fold. Inside each of these fold, if you dissect it, you will find one muscle, one ligament, they have the same name. That means inside the vocal fold, we have the vocal muscle and vocal ligament, the same for the vestibular fold. Okay, good. Here, according to the situation, are we eating something? Are we just breathing through the nose? Or are, are we breathing through the, the mouth? You will find that the location of the soft palate below the epiglottis to allow the air to go through the nose up to the larynx or above the epiglottis where the epiglottis is moved caudally to, to allow the food to go through the mouth to the pharynx and up from there to the cervicus. Here in the lateral wall of the pharynx and exactly in the lateral wall of the oropharynx, you can find the opening to the palatine tonsil. This is the palatine tonsil located in the lateral wall of the oropharynx in this area. Good. Here, I just want to mention that this, the pharynx, is the passage way for both food, water, whatever, and air to the body, to the respiratory system or to the digestive system. And that's why a very good developed immune system or lymphatic tissue found this area everywhere in the form of palatine tonsil, which we described previously, or in the form of uh, tissue found in the mucosa everywhere here. And according to, to the location of this lymphatic tissue, we can give them like a name. The lymphatic tissue found on the tongue called the lingual tonsil. In the uh, wall of the pharynx, the pharyngeal tonsil and the palatine tonsil, as we described before. On the dorsal wall and ventral wall of the soft palate, we can also find a lot of lymphatic tissue. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, between the soft palate and the tongue, here you can see like a fold. This fold here called the palatoglossal fold. Again, origin insertion. Palatoglossal fold. This fold here. I hope it's clear. In some books, they name it as a palatoglossal arch. Another fold extends between the soft palate and the lateral wall of the pharynx. Let me just move it to the side. This fold here called the palatopharyngeal, sorry, the latopharyngeal, yes, palatopharyngeal fold, or in, a, in some books, palatopharyngeal arch. Two folds, again, one to the pharynx, one to the tongue. So in previous video, we talked about the mandibular lymph node and the barotid lymph node, which we can dissect on the lateral surface of the head here and behind the pharynx. Inside this tissue here, we can find left and right another two lymph nodes, the medial and the lateral retropharyngeal lymph node. Retro behind pharyngeal pharynx. So they are located just behind the pharynx. The medial one toward the mid midline of the body called the medial pharyngeal, uh, retropharyngeal lymph node and the lateral one is located a little bit laterally to that. Here again, in this area, the cervicus is located dorsal to the larynx and it moves a little bit caudally and in the neck area, it moves to the left to the larynx and uh, finally inside the thorax, it moves again dorsal to the trachea at that level. So, this is what we can see here. Um, I hope, you know, uh, everything is clear. If you have any question, so please go ahead and write in the comments. Thank you very much. Bye-bye for now.